Um, Tiffany's just looking up Nexium, really. Nexium? Yeah. It, well, when you said it, it's, I'm like, what do you mean? The, the acid reflux right. medication? <laughs> right. Have you guys seen Nexium yet? It's like, what the fuck are you talking oh, wait, about? My dunk- can, I have my, uh, can I have my Dunkaroos? Yes. Are you going to eat them on air? Very excited to try these I got on air. Yeah. Eat Dan, them. have you tried these before? Uh, when I was a child, yeah. When you were a child. Mm-hmm. They're fucking amazing. I'm oh very. Oh my God, they package them so much better now, too. I'm very these days. Um, Dan's, on the sh- Dan's on the show today, Dan Holloway. Oh, are we recording already? Yeah. Because I didn't clap. We did. What? I clapped. Does he I didn't even clap? know we were going live yet. I was just kind of sitting here uh, watching you shovel cookies into your mouth. Yeah, we don't really like make a big fucking show of it. No. We just start. Hey, welcome to Drinking Bros. Welcome, welcome to your nightmare. <laughs> How about that? Awesome. That'll be fun to edit out later. An hour with Ross Patterson. Just kidding. This is Jables, a.k.a. Jesse Wiseman, <laughs> and this is Tiffany Hart, a.k.a. Tiffers. Welcome, guys and girls. Somebody, and we do have a guy on the show and today. we do. Somebody said Colonel Tiffy in the comments section Dantony, the other day. dude, Holloway. Colonel Tiffy? What? Yeah, it was from, uh, oh, no, was. No, 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 they said show me your Tiffies. Show me yeah, your Tiffies. Said, yeah. Show me your Tiffies. Oh, that's, yeah, that's good. It was one of the first videos that I did with Black Rifle. Mm-hmm. That we no one ever Colonel says that to me. No, Colonel Tiffany. Well, that's Tiff. because your name's not Tiffany. That would be right. weird. We made that slogan for it. It was like, show me your Tiffies. Yeah, that was a good day. We just kind of sat around in a room saying stupid shit for we six did. hours and then recorded about half an hour of it. Yep. They were like, hey, say this now. And we were like, that's a fucking funny one. And yeah. I would record it. Yeah, oh, me, me Jared, and Evan sat up at the front of the room. She's yeah. up there getting filmed. And we were just shouting one-liners at her to say oh. fucked up shit. So yeah. you can imagine how that went. Evan's were <laughs> <Great>. Sure. <laughs> When he would come up with something, I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, you came up with a lot of He's, good stuff, too. Evan's a maniac. He is. Actually, there was, it was really, it was a good time. Needless to say. So, show me your tiffies. Show me your show tiffies. Show me your tiffies. So, are you going to... Um, I guess I'm going to try Dunkaroos, because I never have. I where'd, cannot where'd believe you get those? this. Have you not lived up as a child? Would you say? I said, where'd you get those Dunkaroos? In the oh. mail? Oh. I drunkenly was talking to Dan's lady mm-hmm. about those... Old school snacks with the dipping sticks and cheese, yeah, or the crackers. They look like club club crackers, and you wipe cheese on with the oh yeah, okay, yep, with the I red. Oh red yeah, I know what you're red talking about. Red stick knife, stick knife. Yeah, yep. they have a name, right? Though I don't know what that they are. we would be like. Oh shit, those. And I think I was trying to remember them, and your lady was like, "What about Dunkaroos?" And I was like, "Oh, I've never tried them." And she was like, "Who are you?" And she was have like, lived? "Yeah." Well, she was like, "Oh, that's crazy." Two days later, or maybe even the next day. Mm. A box of Dunkaroos was sent to my house. She's very thoughtful. She, I, apparently cute. she got the address from Ross because uh, you, didn't, you level, didn't even know. You thought it was uh, like some kind of weirdo stalker or something. I got, shit. I know. Like I would have a stalker, right? Like I should probably just shut the fuck up. What are they? Uh, Dan, she was the handy. They're the Ritz coming. Snackers. Uh, snacks. Yeah, The Ritz Cracker company. It is a Ritz Cracker, yeah. Yeah. What's, but that's the spread on one with the little red stick, yeah. right? Yeah, yes. The, but what's the, what are the sticks called? I can't remember. What are the remember. sticks that you dunk in the thing? I'll have to look that one up. Keep um, them. Yeah, that level of, of effort and like just being that considerate. Handy snacks. Is crazy to me. There that's you go. it. Handy snacks is the Ritz cracker. What's the other one? Fuckers. I hate not knowing stuff. What was uh, I hate not knowing children's snack food names. Because we used to eat these all the time. They were so convenient. Your parents would give them to you. No. At, at the pool, I would always eat. Oh, it's it? handy snacks too. But it's just a different. These are amazing. It's a different type. They make, Nabisco makes both of them. Fucking I see. shit. Aren't they amazing? Those were my favorite. My mom would have to limit me on those as a child. I mean, obviously. it's like a, it's like cookies and, and, and icing. And icing, right? confetti. For, That's for, all it is. Icing. Yeah. Adults can, you can of do it as an adult. You just take. Cake icing, put some sprinkles in it, and then take animal crackers and dip it in. And that's what it is. It's people like that, like your lady, though, that make me feel like such a bad friend. Why is that? Same. I wouldn't even do that for someone that was like my really good friend. Mm. Um, I mean, I'm not a really good friend sometimes right now. I'm good at stuff like that, and then sometimes I just blank. Yeah. Like right now, I'm just not a good friend at all to anyone. But that is so nice, right? It is really sweet. Well, I like, uh, I like to do nice things for people. You do. But it doesn't seem like I would. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. I'm That's why it's a really big shock and surprise. A bit of surprise. a dick, yeah. When yeah. you do it. But I, I'm, I, I don't think I'm that big of a dick. I'm just really direct. 
and uh, people take that as well. They take well, everyone snowflakes they... nowadays, so it's it's really easy to just be offended by things. Yeah, but I feel like I can save you a lot of time and energy by just telling you what the fuck is going on instead of languishing through this fucking game we all have decided to play with cognitive dissonance where we're not allowed to be honest with each other because feelings are more important than facts, right? That's with everything right now, though, yeah. right? It's ridiculous. If you say, hey, do I look good in this? Like, no, but you look good in these eight things, so let's put one of those I on. I yeah. would appreciate that, though. Like, I mean, I don't want him to be like, no, you look like shit, but if he was like, you know what? You, that's not my favorite outfit on you. What I really prefer is this. Then I would go for that one. Yeah. Right? I've said before like honest. many times on the show, uh, that Dan said I looked good in yellow one time. Mm, but I wear only yellow. wear it because I know that was literally just something that was science at that point. Right. Like, this goes with your skin color, hair color, this looks the best with right. this. And it wasn't like anything else. If it was you do look good in someone a yellow blazer. else or someone that, whatever, I didn't have that, I, that wasn't like that. I would be like, why did they say that? Yeah. Did they want to like, well, do you Dan, know what I mean? You don't have what, the was the, what was the no. motive behind His intentions? It? Why was he saying that? Was he just being nice? Did he even mean it? You're like, no, he fucking meant it. I, I definitely mean it, but it I also mean it when I say nice things, right? That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't just say, I, I say fucked up shit. So, I mean, look, it's, it can be difficult to tell when I'm being serious, for sure, because my face is fucked up, right? It doesn't work properly, like a normal face is supposed to. Sure. Uh, but typically, if I'm being nice, then I'm being genuine, and if I'm being a dick, probably like half genuine, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I do enjoy doing that, but it's not like I'm trying to hurt anybody's feelings or anything. Yeah, but I do feel like if you're There's trying to fuck goal. with someone, it means that you're taking the time to even do that. That's how I feel. Well, to me, if that's more with of me, my... you're fucking with me, that means like... That's like my addiction. He's fucking with my people? My toxic traits is that, is that I can't stop trolling people ever. I'll never stop. I mean... And it's weird. I don't know if that is originally what brought Jared and I together back in the day. Sounds But it about kind right. of was because that's all we did. Mm -hmm. from the he time, loves doing that. From the time we met each other in like late 2006, uh, we've just done nothing but fuck with people for the whole time. And that's how the bromance began. Mm -hmm. And I do believe every time you guys get together, it is just like talking about different ways to troll people. Right. I mean, By that's like a, that's, sending them donkeys. Like I, you guys have big elaborate. Plans well, I mean, there's like all kinds of stuff we want to do. Jared wants to get uh, a, uh, a, you know, those big uh, trash bins that they put outside of construction sites. Yeah. And put it in a cul-de-sac in some random fucking neighborhood and put a number on the side and we just field the phone calls as they come in. Like no, they get rid of it because they're gonna keep trying to get yeah, rid of it. Yeah, they're like, hey, no, we got to get this thing out of here. We can't fucking do this or that. I'm like, look, you guys ordered that thing for six months. That's how long it's gonna be there. <laughs> and just hang up the phone. Damn right? it! But that's you have to so do it in a good, in a good subdivision where they have like, where they where give it's a shit. Be really dramatic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know? look, any look, kind of HOA. Luckily, Jace, our, uh, Jared spent the last shit. I don't know. He spent about three months earlier this year trolling an HOA near not where he lives but near where he lives he's he's not in an HOA you've seen his place there's yeah. nothing anywhere near there but no. right down the street there are a bunch of those uh, Texas neighborhoods all of them have HOAs so he just joined their Facebook group and then started making unreasonable claims he did about he random shit. trolled a bunch of Southwest oh yeah people. yeah there's like 15 or 20,000 people in there that are either current uh stews as they call themselves or flight yes. attendants and people who are applying for jobs that come in to ask stuff and he, he was, was talking in, about his cat or something yeah he said he had a service cat yes. or something like that and asked if he should bring it to the interview or not yeah uh i mean it was really good people really believed him and they were giving him like really heartfelt answers well that's uh, a great comment though on any group like that yeah that is like forming a facebook group for some sort of reason like that so easily can be trolled yeah because they're all like i think later on they found out like someone saw his post of like him uh, bragging about how he was trolling them mm -hmm. have you done something similar like that or no well or i mean you just kind of fuck with people online? to me it's not about the exposure of the troll it's yeah. all for me yeah i don't know if you guys have any of those simple pleasures in life where you're like i don't care who else this is affecting right now like i'm generally speaking a pretty thoughtful guy and I also like to share parts of my life because it's funny and fucked up and it's a good way to connect with other human beings. But this one is usually just for me. So I have, um, I have this app on my phone. It's called Burner. And it's basically three Burner phone numbers mm -hmm. that I can change anytime I want. And I'll, I'll like make ads on Craigslist for weird shit. Like I'm selling dogs or something like that um, or whatever. And, you know, just fuck with people through text. Yeah. That way I've got it for my, I can go back and read it whenever I want, but it's all for me. 
which is kind of fucked up. I mean, that's like serial co- killer level stuff. A I little mean, bit, or like is per- it just I don't know. introvert? Like, would that be the difference between like me? Like, I can't enjoy too much mm. unless there's someone else there, or I can share it with someone or talk to someone on the phone about it. Um, is that kind of the difference or definition between introvert and extrovert, right? Maybe a little bit. Maybe. I mean, look, in the classical sense, maybe, but the, the personality type introvert and extrovert means that that's where you get your energy from, right? I'm sure you guys have discussed this on the show before. So in, yeah. you might see somebody that's shy and think they're an introvert, and they probably are, but you might see somebody that's loud and boisterous in public, but they're assume they're an introvert. extrovert, but they are an introvert. Yeah. They just, that is exhausting to them. That's how I am. That's why I do this. Right. That's why I'm in media now, by the way, just to challenge myself because I know I don't want to do it. So that's, I don't, I don't know what kind of fucking retarded caveman bullshit that is mm-hmm. right. to see something like, oh God, that sucks. Oh, fuck it. Let's do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's kind of how a lot of our attitudes are around here. I mean, you're so you like, push yourself though. Yeah. But Otherwise I would get bored because life is super boring. Let's be real. 100%. It's super boring. Um, and it's long too. Um, really long. But when you're like fielding those calls by yourself, that's what I mean. Like, you are, gotta, you you there someone, are you just sitting there laughing? Are you sitting there laughing? I mean, he's obviously not sharing it online and with people, but do you ever like text someone or be like, dude, you should see this? Or are you ever showing anyone? Every now and again, but it usually only comes up if somebody else asks. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Because everybody at this point knows that I'm a fucking giant piece of shit troll. So it's like, sure. what have you been up to lately? I'm like, well, actually. Try this I, new troll. Yeah, yeah. I, I put these German Shepherds up for sale on, uh, on Craigslist and then told everybody they died. Uh, or something like that you know it's fucked up but he's like now that's fucked up but i gotta be honest it probably would be fun like i've seen people troll when they get you know political text messages right yeah mm. representatives like people troll those all i do the that a lot time. too yeah that's funny i sign up for all the all like not the republican ones because they're kind of boring to be honest yeah the lefty people are crazy right now so it's funnier so all the all the uh, phone number stuff and mailing lists i'm on all of them yes i get like probably 60 to 70 political emails per day and uh, I respond to not that many of them, but, you know, a couple. I feel day. like it'd be fun to troll someone who was bothering me, right? Because I would have more intention of doing it besides just like some random stranger. Like someone, if someone's, so some guy was sent me a dick pic. Mm. I would troll him so fucking hard. Like there's things that girls do now where they will respond back and they'll do like within, juris, within this and they'll post, I don't know, some type of like you violated this and this of Instagram code and da 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 And your picture is now being forwarded to the nearest, you know, police department. And the guy, and it's like, please press delete if this is incorrect. And the guy's like, delete, delete, delete. Like he's, and that's to me funny. Trolling. It is funny. Yeah. I mean, there's an old Jerry Seinfeld joke where he's getting a call from a fucking, uh, uh, what do you call it? Telemarketer, yeah. right? Yep. And it's like six, he, he's, he, this is one of his stand-up jokes. He's like sitting on stage talking about it. Like, yeah, I get a call at six o'clock. We're about to sit down for dinner. By the way, he's been married to his wife for like 80 years now or some shit like that. Yeah. It's, it's weird. Dang. Ugh. Uh, like, it's just weird <laughs> for Hollywood. You think there's something going monogamy. on. Monogamy. Yeah, like yeah. No, I love monogamy, but they're probably <laughs> running a sex cult of some sort to stay together that long and be that rich. They're billionaires, for Christ's sake. Anyways, yeah. uh, <laughs> the joke is that the telemarketer calls. It's, they're sitting down for dinner. And he's like, oh, sorry, we're about to sit down for dinner. Can I call you back? And he goes, oh, just tell us when to call back. He's like, no, why don't you just give me your number? And I'll call you back. And I'll call you back mm-hmm. personally. And he goes, oh, I don't want that. So, so you don't want people randomly calling you, trying to talk to you about stuff you don't care about? And he's so like, good. oh, uh, no, I don't. And he's like, all right, great. Mm-hmm. See you later. Click. Um, and I actually parroted that entire conversation on a call one time. Did you? Yeah, it was really good. Oh, I was worried I was going to fuck something up. Uh, you did it word for word. But it was not word for word, obviously. You had to respond to what the person's saying. But it was pretty close. I was very happy about that. That's one of my best trolls of all time, but there's no evidence for it. What does it look like when you're happy? <laughs> I much. have a picture. I have you one have a pic- picture? I have one picture of him. You almost smile. Like, I almost, laugh. You almost yeah, full I made on smiling. You, I made you people, laugh people get me on video laughing all the time. Oh, and like, they do, yeah. And screenshot it. They're like, oh, you're smiling. I'm like, look, I, it's, not laugh, a, it's, not a, it's not it's a just, contest to not smile, by the way. I just... Don't do it much unless yeah, yeah. there's a reason. It's not like you're trying not to. It's just in no. pictures. But yeah, there's a one of KGB, Jared, you and me that we have. And he has, you can see his dimples, like his mm. smile dimples. I do have those. Through his beard. 
And cause someone was like, oh, he's never smiled before. I'm like, bitch, I got a picture. We were wrecked as fuck that night, I believe. That one, I don't know. Were we? I don't I think mean, we were. I, we did a video. I'm pretty sure every time I've ever hung out with you. You probably were. I've been <laughs> was wrecked. that Dave and Buster night or a different one? Dave oh, and no, Buster. that was a different night. Because he, oh. he wasn't there at Dave and Buster's. No. Oh, that okay. was when, you know, drama went down <laughs> with the ladies at uh, Dave and Buster's. KGB and everything. KGB in Wilmington? Yeah. Huh? And then Dave and Buster's? What are you talking about? Now, KGB not, is a person. KGB is you know a person. You know who it is. We just don't say her name. Oh, I have no idea who that oh, is. Oh, okay, okay. Oh. Um, it was someone Jared dated that tried to take down Remember during that company? time when the first time we all hung out together, the girl that was with us? Mm. That's who we call KGB. Okay. Yeah, that was, uh, that was funny. Yeah. And that whole drama were... with that girl. I know who you're talking about now. <laughs> yeah. Like her, her birthday party or whatever. Oh, that too. Yeah. So that was actually probably one of the funniest nights. Mm-hmm. We all had together, so... Justin was there, too. And here we go. We did get fucking wrecked that night. We did get wrecked like, that night. Big time. Jared and Dan are trolling this girl, right? So this girl posts her birthday party at this place in San Antonio, right? And she posts oh, a picture yeah. of her with a military uniform on, okay. right? So we thought she was a military... Yeah. We thought he was a vet. Yeah, and he had... Uh, he, But she would turn out to be a stripper. She turned right? out to be a stripper. That was a stripper picture, so not we got, a military So Jared picture. got LK Designs, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. Lauren. Yeah. Lauren, yeah. he's fucking hilarious, by he the is. way. Uh, got him to make like a fucking... Poster. An event poster for her birthday. And then he oh, posted on Drinking Bros and tagged her in and she saw it. And she was like, oh, what the hell's going on? She was reasonably confused about she was, it. And she sure. was kind of freaking out. Well, she, she was, like, was freaking out because the Drinker Bros came to the comments section and yep. started writing all sorts of fucked up shit in there. You can imagine. I'm not, sure, not going to get into it, but right. you can imagine what they said. Right. Uh, and then she said that her friends ditched her and so they went to a different bar or some shit Well, like I think that. it was like somewhat out of fear, but then also like people, a bunch of people did ditch her. So she changed the location. So we went yeah. to the initial one, which was fun as fuck. Yeah, I was buying new shots. Great. Yeah, that place is great. Him, when I first met him, I was buying him drinks, and I bought you Jello. I bought Jello shots. I don't remember that. Yeah, exactly. But I'm sure it <laughs> if happens. anybody buys me shots now, I'm gonna ask them what they're gonna be for Halloween. Jello shots. Yeah. Why? What's? It was fun. I don't understand. What's the Halloween thing got to do with it? Um, because I think we don't do shots anymore. No, we we know we can't. So we've and grown, Jello shots was very different. We've grown past it. So anytime someone is like, want to do shots. I ask them what they want to be, what they're being for Halloween. What are you going as? Because like, because it's the same level of childishness, immaturity. Yes. I well, you, you know. do shots. You'll order shots. We just but know you can our, handle our it. Ability, That's the fucking. I'm a 220 pound man. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. You you can handle it. I can drink all day. Plus, I don't get hangovers and shit. Like people, you should be. If you're a normal human being, you shouldn't be mixing alcohols together, particularly wine. There's a, for some reason, white ladies like to add red wine to their diet at the end of the night. That's because that's what you have at home. When you get home, you want a nightcap? Yeah. Bad mistake. Always keep extra booze at your house because adding those sulfites and the high sugar content from that wine at the end of your drinking day fucks you up badly. What if all you drink is wine? Uh, well, then just stick with it. Yeah. Don't change it up at that point. But drink Don't a, go changing. Drink a liter of water before you go to sleep and that'll help you out. That, I should that definitely do that. Going to be bad. Yeah, you need something so to soak up all the sulfites. How do you not have hangovers? Is it anomaly? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. I think I do might you, be a superhero. Of some I've sort. asked him the same thing too because you'll be drinking, 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 smoking, and I'm just like, and I feel like death the next day. He's do fine. you sleep really well? No, I haven't slept in fucking ten years. Who oh, knows? Okay. I mean, I sleep a couple of hours a night, yeah, but not well. Okay. I'm up a lot. Like I wake up so every two hours. So it's not sleep. It's not sleeping because in my mind, metabolism. I'm always like, guys don't have. Anxiety, like they don't wake up being like, "What did I do no. last night? Who did you know, I annoy?" He, you know, he does, so they could care. sleep longer because we always wake up a lot earlier than we should be, right? Mm. So we stayed out super late, drank a bunch at five in the morning. Yeah, it's like clockwork. Pretty much every time we'll wake up and be like, "Who did we annoy? What did we say? What did I do?" But blah, I feel blah. like my body's also waking up because it's finally hungover. Like my body's like, "Bitch, you drank way too much. I feel like shit right now. Yeah, I could yeah. puke, but I don't know. I mean, hangover is just alcohol withdrawal, right? Yes. You're just going through withdrawal. Yeah. So I guess maybe uh, my body, it, 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 maybe it is uh, the, uh, the metabolism and the fact that I eat so much protein. So my, like, my fascial tissue just, heals like, really fast. Like, it could be that. That's what I mean, because I know some guys who do have pretty fast metabolism, and they don't really have major hangovers. Mm. They could, I, I don't know. At least that's what I know. I mean, I rarely even get headaches. Or body external. I actually stuff. normally don't get the headache. I just my stomach feels like mm. shit, and my body feels gross and tired. I've got to pretty much black out to get a hangover. When was the last time you blacked out? 
uh, New Year's Eve 2013. See, that was oh, a long geez. time ago. <laughs> Do you gray out? Uh, yeah, the last time I grayed out was at my brother's uh, birthday party, his 40th at really? Top Golf. What I'm curious is. There? Oh, yeah. really? Yep. What does it take for you to get to that level of, of gray out where, like, how, do you know how many drinks and how much you had no, to smoke? No, but it's, it's just if I don't eat, typically. Yep. Usually what happens is I get busy during the day and I have something to do at night. Um, and you go right into the evening. Yeah. And you don't, yeah. Just like, oh, I guess I'll eat something later. And I do. Booze. More and more of the booze. And it just doesn't, that's not a good idea. Yeah. Right? I have more emotional hangovers than real body hangovers. I know. Mm. Sometimes I feel like that, too. And that's, it, the, that's the women in us. Tell me what an emotional hangover is. Uh, it's just, a, it's, it's just uh, guilt. It is guilt. Crippling. You, you sit About all different kinds of things. Yeah. Why were you drinking that much? Now you're ruining this day. I have kids, so I definitely have well, a mom her, yeah. guilt hangover every time I drink to <clears> a point where I can't take care of them. Let the me, let me, I'm going to give you, from someone that's never raised a child before, I'm going to give you some good parenting Please. advice. Ready for this? <laughs> Please, um, Dan. That's why we had you on, actually. Do you know yeah. how, like, think about when you were younger. Imagine if you were 14 when social media first started to become a thing, right? Mm. Fucking A. Um, and imagine how the seemingly perfect people on there all the time. Now it's a little more real than it was before, but back in the day, it was all fucking glamour shots. Imagine how that would have affected you, psychologically speaking, right? Right. That probably would not have been good for your self-esteem. Sure. And that's been a complaint about the magazine and fashion industry for years. Um, I'm sure some of it's bullshit, but it, there's got to be some truth to it. Now, I think a imagine, little bit, yeah. imagine your children growing up, never being exposed to what normal fucking adults do on a regular basis, right? The conse- yeah. And the consequences of those things. I don't think them yeah. seeing you hung over the next day is a bad thing. I think it's a good lesson to learn. Not necessarily that you shouldn't drink, but hey, be prepared for the consequences. It's a good lesson to learn. You don't want to shield kids from shit, right? Right. I think that's why I give uh, my dogs drugs all the time. Not I do believe ones. that. No, I do believe that. Some of my best memories were like at my parents' fucking parties with like yeah. everyone around, like being fucking crazy. Kids want to feel like adults. And look, it's it's hard for. I think it's even if you're the parent, you can speak more to this, and you can because you have a stepkid. But it's got to be difficult for a child to connect with an adult in a real way that that's based on something other than just implicit trust because you're their parent. You mm. know what I mean? Because th- that's a thing, of course, but. How else are you connecting with this person? Like, see, kids are annoying. They're like, hey, you, did you see this new fucking video game? You're like, shut the fuck shut up. up. Right? But inviting them into your world is a little bit better than you trying to go into theirs, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, like, I would rather my, my kid be uh, hanging out at a, at a bar with me or something and, or at a party at our house or yeah. some shit like that than us sitting there talking about some fucking weird video game thing. Yeah, yeah I mean? that or at some fucking yeah. Chuck E. Cheese, although yeah. Chuck E. Cheese was an institution in work. Was. Really bummed. Is it gone now? No, um, it's still around. Barely. Bank, they filed for bankruptcy, I think. Mm. So some of them are still there. Are they today. restructuring or are they, you know? No. What, was it 11 or 13? I think they were already on the brink mm. and this COVID thing, but that's, that's yeah. definitely not, you cannot go which to is, places which like is, that. Which is yeah. funny because uh, kids aren't really in any danger at all, statistically speaking. For yeah, COVID. exactly. Just but they're, I mean, like, they're keep so them away from dirty their grandparents. that you can't have a place open where kids just touch things and throw things on the well whatever, you say whatever. that but why not because the people that work there are typically in their early 20s they're not at risk statistically speaking the children are not at risk their parents might be because they're look it's america they're probably fat yeah so. but in order for that to happen we would have to admit all different oh, kinds no, of things that work, we don't no. want to admit Correct. right so they closed down chuck e cheese because yeah. that's the danger the most dangerous place they were trying to just be a pizza place called Pasquale's? So that's what really? it was? Do you remember the Italian puppet guy? Pasquale's, yeah. whatever? Yeah, yeah. So they were trying to be just a pizza place that just started delivering their pizza, which that's is amazing, by the way. Chuck E. Cheese pizza is I one of the best. So Here's how I know you're white trash. Oh, yeah, I'm trash, yeah. You ready? Because you just said that. Because yeah. Chuck E. Cheese pizza is basically pizza that is frozen and you pull out and best. put it in the microwave. That's what it is. It's the right? best thing that's I ever happened. I don't remember it, but I recall it being very greasy. Good, I know. Amazing. Yeah, I know. That's <laughs> what you were going to say, right? My mom would go over it with Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were remembering how good it was. It was like the pizza we, we got at Jared's, kind of. Mm. Right? Yeah. Like, that was, there was nothing special to It's just mediocre, that. no. We were all so hungry that we ate it. We didn't give a fuck. <clears throat> yeah. And that I was lo- your, you loved it. I like that, though. When white, when white trash stuff gets back into culture, it's usually a good thing, like PBR, for example. Yeah. Yep. Uh, there's a couple of restaurants in, uh, in Oakland called Homeroom, and all they do is make macaroni and cheese. 
So it's every kind of noodle and cheese you can imagine and all the toppings, whether from different parts of the country, like people in the South like put that. fucking cut up hot dogs and sausage yeah. in there. Uh, people from the Northeast put like peas and shit in theirs, like you, but every ingredient you could think of. And they just made an Bacon entire jalapenos. restaurant out of that. Bacon is one of them. Were we Spicy all trash stuff. or just me? No, like, we're all white trash. All, yeah. Did you guys all have I grew up in South Carolina. No, I, fucking, no, I, I grew up in South love. Carolina and she grew up in fucking Missouri. Missouri. For yeah, Christ's yeah. Sake. Listen, yeah, Velveeta cheese, macaroni, like all mm -hmm. day long. I go That's crash. Twice, Until yeah. I knew what, like, I can't eat that anymore. Yeah, like that was Velveeta where it no, came like, out of the. Yeah, yeah. Ugh, I can't eat know that now. anymore. But back in the day, I loved it, obviously. Yeah. And that, right now, I would definitely. Hamburger eat. Helper? We were, I can't eat we that were poor, now. and we, that's what I'm but saying. I, yeah, but, back then, yeah. Well, I'm sure. using right? a lot of things. I think this is where the Dunkaroo thing, mm. probably the even conversation came up, because I'm using a lot of nostalgia right now as like a shield for mm. everything that's going on. So, in order to kind of take a break from stuff, I'll think about just weird shit from the back good, in the, the good day. Old day. The good old days. I'll buy a, a <clears> loaf of Wonder Bread, mm. crap, best Bunny foods, bread, do you remember that? Best foods, mayonnaise, and real bologna with the red on the outside no, that's, oh yeah, you have yeah. To, like yeah. that <laughs> and you fry that the shit. most white trash if you ask me what my last meal is gonna be no, if we i ever am on this. death row it was on we did it on the podcast like what's your favorite most favorite meal if you had to eat for the rest of your life and you literally said bologna with, just because it's yeah. a, with doritos smashed on top or no lays Hers potato is, chips i did i did it evolve a little bit mm -hmm. from that where i would make I think, did I talk about that? Like all the stoner food you would make? Oh, yeah. Like we're going to do, Jesse and I are going to do a show yeah. about us. We're going to like get intoxicated. And, and then uh, this is a series, by the way, and yeah. just make all the food that stoners like to eat. Smart. And it's like, like a cooking show, right? He has this right? burger that sounds yeah. like I want it right now. But oh, there's it's going to be. The burger has goddamn uh, braised short ribs inside of it. <sighs> what the fuck? That sounds and gouda, amazing. And gouda all you know, inside you, of you the burger. You know, you got to get on the, the show. Is your favorite. What's his name? The big dude? Franklin? Hair? Oh, Guy Fieri, my Guy stepdad. Fieri. Oh, yeah. yeah you would, have to get yeah. him on. He is amazing. Yeah. At some point, we're going to have At him somewhere, we'll, we'll, right? We'll definitely run into him because I've got people. He does a lot of charity events for he, first he responders and He does, for sure. Stuff, yeah, so. but also because uh, we're serious about renaming Columbus to Flavortown. And I've got. Oh, and we'll make that happen. Yeah, I'm waiting to hear back from a person that's going to make a giant bronze statue of Guy Fieri for us. We're going to raise the money on fucking Indigo, or not Indigo, but uh, what, what's the other one? Kickstarter. Kickstarter, or some shit like that. Yeah. yeah. Go it's only going to cost whatever. about 15K to make and then probably another five to ship. So 20,000 is probably what we're going to need. And we're going to put it somewhere prominently in Columbus and organize a march. Not a protest, just a march. No, 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 yeah. A Not peaceful even march. A peaceful, mostly Almost peaceful. Like there there yes. might be some shit on mostly fire in the background. Peaceful. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just to get the people. And it's Columbus Day is coming up. It's in two weeks, right? Oh, my God, like yeah. That. It's like October the 12th, I believe. Jeez, time is just. Yeah, so. I feel like I'm going to cry. Be, That's amazing. We're not going to be able to get it done by then, obviously. That's just why I was thinking about it again. And I <sighs> reached out to a few people, but look. Yeah, it's on the 12th. Yeah, it's. Uh, can you imagine? Getting a city, U.S. city, a major U.S. city where Ohio State is. That would be that renamed epic after Guy be. Fieri. That's what we should be doing. Like, and he best. better fucking show up. And it's a tiny oh, troll come on. Of course too, he would show so. up. I think, like, his, would. I think his mom still lives there or some shit. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She lives somewhere near, nearby. Yeah. If he did or not, he would definitely show up because he's amazing. And he's a fucking bro. Yeah, dude. If he wasn't in a frat, he would be right now, actually. If he got, if somebody exactly. like showed up like, hey, you want to join this frat? I'd be like, meh. Fuck it. He looked like a frat. He what am I gonna like do? A boy. Yeah, sure. but like, yeah, exactly. With Plain those shirts, spiky not anything hair. bad. Yeah. And the I glasses. I refuse to believe that Guy Fieri has done anything bad. So, no. nothing well, I'm like sure that, he's done plenty of drugs, right? Like cocaine, I probably. No, you think? Do you I don't know. That bad there, though? no, there are some. He may smoke weed or something, but there are some uh, chefs that won't smoke cigarettes ever because right. they're afraid it's gonna fuck oh, with their palate. Yeah, same thing with sense. same thing with cocaine. Cocaine can fuck with your palate. Yeah. So there's a lot of people that choose other things. Now, I think Bourdain obviously didn't do that. No. He chose everything. That's which why is... he wasn't the greatest chef. No, he was a good he entertainer. He was a better yeah. Yeah. writer, entertainer, whatever. Speaking of chefs, Gordon Ramsay posted a picture or video on his uh, Instagram this morning of a, like, a cauliflower steak, grilled cauliflower steak, and he's like drizzling shit on it. Like, there's nothing you can put on that to make it okay Shut other than meat. Fuck up. What? If you drizzle steak on top of that, then I'll eat the steak and throw that cauliflower away. But what are you thinking, dude? Like I've he's, seen people been making a lot more um, But he's been meals. talking shit about vegans for years. With Not cauliflower. that he's... He makes plenty of vegetarian shit. As a matter of fact, he's got a really good Indian cook uh, as well. Like, he's... I think his 
primary is French, right? Yeah. Because he studied in Paris for a long time, but he cooks really good Indian food as well. So he's fine with vegan and vegetarian food, but like, come on, man, you're Gordon Ramsay and it's 2020. Everybody's a pussy right now. You need to be posting pictures of steak every single day. Yeah, 100%. We need it as a You know, as a he's actually, society. he's trolling people on TikTok. Oh, he does all the time. Yeah, it's fucking hilarious. You send him making your shit, and he just like lights your ass up the whole time. Yeah, so on TikTok, there's all like wannabe chefs or people just making like everyone shows their recipes on there, and he will get on and do edit, and he (laughs) he'll fucking just go off on them. It's hilarious. That is. He actually loves it. He's actually he's actually nice in a lot of it, but I'm sure, and I'm sure there's some videos where he's nice through the whole thing, but his social media people aren't gonna post that because it's not funny correct yeah you know exactly. what i mean unless it was something incredible or noteworthy but no most of it's time, way he's funnier just reacting to, to some of the most ridiculous shit yeah it's like who, who would you oh here's a good white trash test how do you fry bologna like what 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 are the steps you you would personally take to fry bologna fry i mean i just put it in a pan i don't you usually do i don't eat bologna though like i would literally I when i did when i was it. younger I would just put it in a hot pan mm-hmm. and let it pop and bubble and kind of brown and then flip it over the other you side. You need butter down it. there first. No, right? I would never do that. Well, it's mostly fat, so you don't necessarily need butter. I would never do that. Oh, but like, I'm saying when does I was anyone younger, ever need butter? It depends on what you're cooking, I suppose. But like if I'm cooking Wagyu, I usually, like if it's an A5 or something that's so marbled, I, I just like maybe Keep half a tablespoon, trash, something please. like that. Um, um, what do you... I, I didn't ever fry it, so but I would always a, just do cold, cold, it's cold. It's a circle, right? Yeah. So she just described the problem. Uh, as it heats up, the outer ring tightens up first, and then the inner ring stays softer. Uh, you cut it softer. in half? Yeah, you got to cut it like a line down the middle, mm. right? And then it turns into a pack. No, but it was always head. fun to hear the pop, you know? <laughs> I didn't want to hear the pop because usually I was cooking it in my underwear. And I didn't want the pop to pop grease into my fucking dick and balls. That sure. makes sense. Yeah. See, I was so young. I wasn't naked. Mm. <laughs> and back in the day, too, did you ever take just like the shitty hot dogs and cut them like three fourths of the way down and put them in the microwave and, and cook them that way? I've cooked hot dogs did. in the microwave a yeah. million times. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Like all the time. That was like something that we used to do. Well, so. What is your last meal? Before yeah, like a death row. Like, death row would be your, what would be your meal? I don't know. Really? One restaurant, you don't have one like thing. Any favorite would it be food dots, ever? pretzels, and fucking a wagyu steak, or nothing? No, not that. I mean, mm. eating pussy. <laughs> yeah, be pussy <laughs> probably. No. Um, I didn't yeah. know you would say something like that. Yeah, that's probably that probably be it. Yeah. <laughs> there we I mean, go. My last meal would be the cooch. I don't know how uh, homegirl would feel about me going down on her right before I die. In she front might, of everyone? She, well, Can you imagine in that room? Did, wait, wait, when did you add the part? You don't eat your final meal in front of people. You don't? What are you talking about? Oh, no. I don't know. Oh. No, they bring it to your cell. And yeah, you yeah, eat sometimes it. if you're just like you in front of people on. like in the electric chair, like, I guess I'm just gonna fucking Do you really eat think it. that's what it is? You go into oh, the room God. where you get That'd electrocuted hot, and there's a fucking dining room table and they just bring out fucking seven Maybe courses Maybe all of the, food? Pe- the family of the no. people that you are killed waiting, are just like, watching you? Can you imagine though that if that was like something, you know, that she would like? Is all uh, of a sudden oh, that she's was just kink? laying there, wide, you know, legs wide open. And she's got a death fetish. Some people, you know, people do. Oh, people do. That's where if snuff films come from. you can think of it, for sure. It's, people are into it. Yeah. My somewhere. last meal. You know what? I don't know. I don't think I would eat a last meal, to be honest. I probably would be, be hard to too, eat, huh? Well, so you got to get the endless breadsticks from fucking, you know, Olive Garden. Mm, and you just maybe. never stop eating them, so you never fucking die. I think I would time. be too uh, in my own head to even think about food at that point. Sure. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I would just be now. He's being realistic. I would be picturing uh, what it means to not exist, which is interesting, right? Like, try to right now, just try. Don't, to f- I don't. Well, because actually, one of the broettes commented on the broettes page at one point, and she goes, "Do you guys ever just think about death and what it would be like if you died, or is it just me? Am I just weird?" Forget about death. Just ignore, like not ig- existing. Ignore all th- what you think or know or believe about religion or any, any kind of afterlife, right? Just imagine not existing at all. That's what I'm saying. Is you know well, what I mean? that kind of goes around the same thing yeah. of like. People do go down those, those little rabbit holes. Mm-hmm. I even sometimes sit there and think, and it's like, this is weird. Because your mind, it's not the reality. There's, no rea- like, there's nothing to grasp. No, and what your, right? mind, what your mind is. Your mind's trying to figure out very, some type of answer. Your mind itself is a curious thing, like the structure of it, right? So yeah. every, depending on your, your uh, metabolism and your travel and things like this, uh, all the atoms in your body are different every two to five years, right? So there's no atom in your body right now that was there five years ago. Your brain, your eyeballs, your teeth, your butthole, none of it, right? It's all different now, all of it. And that happens for somebody that is as athletic and young as you two dum-dums. You're probably looking at like two to three years. Uh, You run like a fucking gazelle, shut up. Uh, 
probably every two to three years, all of your atoms are different, right? So what is your brain exactly? Mm -hmm. Right, it's a collection of organized cells, but what's telling it to organize itself that way? And if it could just shed itself every two years and reassemble, like what are your neural channels exactly? Um, I, I like questions like that because it betrays how little we know. You know what yes. I mean? Like you can get to a point where you think you have a pretty good grasp on things. To me, that's that's what makes life boring. I, I don't Is like once you feel like you just have things figured out and you right. have a grasp. Yeah, yeah. If there's, I mean, well, otherwise. Like imagine something you were like, let's say you, you love working out. Like you, you, the, the results are great, but you just enjoy, you like literally enjoy working out, right? But you wake up every day fucking as chiseled as you're ever going to be. And it's just like that. That would suck. Yeah. When there's no, yeah. when you finally see the end, yep. is that what you mean? You're like, this is yeah. it? Because is- that's like, what, what else do you do at that point? You know what I mean? Like what life is left to be lived if there's not some kind of effort or struggle involved or, you know, winners and losers. Yeah. in life that's what's important that's why a, that's there's why always s- more winning for, see, for the most, for the most part, part yeah there's, there's always someone winning, yeah. to be better than yeah there's always someone something to conquer mm-hmm. it's like the next yeah challenge. that's that's the kind of like death doesn't work concern or depress me under that shit but stagnant for some it do, but yeah. for some it's scary because their yeah. mind cannot comp- our mind cannot comprehend it because it's never been through it mm-hmm. right so it's something that's really unique to our mind to try well, no, to grasp and figure out what it is. We have been through it. Like you, like, I, I, I don't know if it was Spinoza or who said it, uh, but it was like somebody asked him if he was worried about death. And he goes, I didn't exist for billions of years before I existed, and I didn't feel any pain then, so I don't imagine I would feel any after I True, exist. but that's sometimes such a hard reality to grasp. Of like, all of reality is hard to right? grasp. Like, how is that? Because it's kind of brutal, right? I mean, you're, you're all going to die. All yeah. Of you gonna die all your loved ones are gonna die right some horribly and uh it's it's the way it is right it's far better to grasp reality for what it is than persistent delusion no matter how gratifying that's uh carl sagan i believe said that Mm -hmm. and that's how i organize my entire life but you think sometimes that we say we stay so distracted so we don't think about those things i think all the time we stay so distracted because we don't look but it's there's a i don't think that's being a coward and i don't think it's dumb either i mean you can't imagine you have like a small foot pain but you got shit to do Mm -hmm. if you just sat there and thought about that foot pain all day you would never get anything done and the entire purpose of life if you think about the uh about how energy works right entropy and all this stuff it's all information basically in some cases it's ones and zeros in some cases it's much more conglomerate and organized than that if that's true and we know it to be true now at least mathematically then the only thing you can ever take out of this life are the memories you make, like mm-hmm. each cell that goes somewhere else after you die. And even when you're alive still, uh, has these memories attached to them. If they are assembled in the right way, like I think, I don't know if you know how computers work, but in a Windows computer, not Mac, but they figured out with these platter disks way back in the day that if they store the data all over the place, fragmentation, right? If they store it all over the place and it becomes more efficient, for the disk to catch those little bits. So the, there will be a, a header on each packet, right, that says this is part of this collection. And every time the disk spins, it grabs all those things from that collection all at once, and that's, you see that picture on the screen. That's how it works, right? And then you have to defragment because it becomes so scattered over time, it becomes inefficient, right? So if we reach some suitable level of technology where we could reconstitute things like that, all of your memories... And maybe even your consciousness could be reconstituted. You know what I mean? At that point. So that's why I think life is about experience and memories. Mm -hmm. Do stuff, right? Go out and do stuff. Have fun. If you don't like what you're doing, you know, try to find a way out. I'm not going to talk like uh, Gary V where he's telling 20 year olds to quit their fucking job and quit (laughs) school and stupid shit like that. He is smart on some things. We just did a show yesterday where we said don't follow your dreams. Yeah. (sighs) He's really smart on getting a huge fucking investment from his family and then turning that into more money. Now he did that well for sure, but did he make smart business decisions to turn it into money or did he just like say a lot of shit and to gullible people? I think it's probably the latter. Yeah. It's sort of like the survivor right. complex. You yeah. Know yeah. But either way, either way, um, something's working for him. Yeah. He's, he's doing fine. Uh, but either way, life is about making memories, right? Mm-hmm. Do things. Don't, and, you know, a lot goes into that. Like, do I fucking work really hard now and not see people I want to see, but then I can spend all of my time with them later? Like, yeah. you have to make a decision at some point. Yeah, but point. then as soon as you do that, then you get cancer and die. You know what I mean? Of course, yeah. Like, there's that always. Yeah. 
Uh, or that, it's like, that's my, it's always a that's risk. my problem. Or there's the opposite where it's like, okay, well, do I just have all my fun now and, you know, do everything. But then later on, I look back and go, man, I wish I would have See that I think hard scare- and had the money. That right? I think scares me more is to be like old ass lady alone or something. It was like, man, I had a lot of fucking fun. Like, I don't know. I don't know yeah, what's you're better. Driving, right? you're, you're you be that old woman to, to look back and to, what do you mean? It no, she doesn't want to be a fucking Uber driver in Vegas. Exactly. It used to be a showgirl like, back in the day. I had so much fun and so many yeah. memories. Because you were an Uber driver. Because then I was an older lady that, you know, is no husband, no kids, yeah, yeah. no That's living I mean. in an apartment, probably but, bartending, yeah, yeah. like toothless. Yeah. Like, and to be honest, like even if you had done stuff earlier, you don't really, in my opinion, I don't think you really start living your life unless you're an athlete or musician or somebody that gets famous or rich early on, you don't really start living your life well until you're in your mid to late thirties, mm-hmm. maybe That's in your forties, right? Like your forties and fifties will, unless you get sick, probably be your best de- two decades on yeah. this planet, right? Cause you're in that prime area where you've got a lot of money or however much money you have way more money than you, at least you, than you did before. Plus you're still physically healthy enough yes. to do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. Right. Uh, that pe- people get too caught up in, being on track for things like we have we have these expectations out of kids to know what they want to do for the rest of their life when they're 18 and go ahead and start getting educated for that by the way that bill is going to follow you around for the next 10 to 15 years i mean it's yeah, fucked and it up, could be right? a huge fucking waste yeah. of time could Correct. be a huge way that might not even use it that industry may not exist yeah. right anymore and i've got four degrees and i have used zero of them i have a couple of friends who have few, two masters and they've yeah. never used them they just went back and got it's their dumb. nursing degree you know i mean anything? i didn't pay for any of it Luckily, that's, because the, yeah, the government that's did, good. but it's, it, it could be, a, it could have been a lot worse. I could be like pretty much anybody that comes out of medical school or gets a Juris doctorate, like becomes a, a fucking attorney has somewhere between a hundred and two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in debt as soon as they come out. Now here's the problem with that. All of our biggest earners in their mid to late twenties now, instead of going out and buying houses and having expendable income, they're paying off debt. Mm-hmm. right that's why the housing market fucking sucked that's right, why almost everybody's renting into, now yeah almost everyone's renting now and that's not tenable long term it's going to be a big problem in the next 10 years the real estate market is just gonna it's better when it's steady right mm-hmm. like if you're smart and pay attention and you have the liquid capital you can take advantage when there are all these dips and and rises and stuff like that but if you're just a normal human being that doesn't have that ability you get fucked because like, hey, I got to be out of my apartment in fucking yeah. four months. We're trying to start a family. I want to buy a house, but the market's fucked right now. I've got to put my entire life on hold because these assholes created this predatory system. You know what I mean? It's yeah. nobody, nobody ever thinks of these second, third order effects. Yeah, like my family lives, they own houses in California. Mm. They bought them forever ago for nothing. And they're mm. like, oh, why are you moving? I'm like, because, dude, like I can't, I can't afford a house and especially not yeah. here. Mm-hmm. But now you'd be lucky to find anything suitable for a two child family for 800,000 in oh, LA. Oh dude, that'd be a fix that'd be a good deal. upper in yeah. the ghetto Jeez. probably. That would be a really good deal. A really good deal. Um, do you remember Y2K? Remember? Yeah. A member Y2K like to yeah, do this. Yeah, I remember with you. how nothing ever happened. Do you, do you I recall being in the basement like everyone counting down wait my dad no joke stocked up shit and us waiting for the, like the lights to turn off or something cuz that's what everyone thought. I no, never that, thought that was, was gonna, never going to. I it never was the, thought it was going to happen. No, of course it wasn't going to happen. It was a fucking computer glitch. What they, they all they did was code the year and two instead of four digits, right? Right. So they knew when it switched over to zero zero, everything was going to think it was nineteen hundred again. Yeah. Now we don't even know what effects that would have had, aside from the fact that it was said nineteen hundred instead of two thousand. Right. There was no evidence that it would have crashed anything or any of that bullshit. But people were fucking dumb. Taking all their all money you, out of the bank. Yeah. Oh, see, so there's do that. still people in the woods. He just made sure he's like, we got some canned goods, we yeah. got some extra shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's a type where Chris is even, like, with a hurricane. Chris is like, we might not get hit by the hurricane, but we're going to have a hurricane kit just in case. Yeah, for sure. You should. I mean, sure. you should you have, know, you should have, It's like, basic survival instincts of just like, you know what? Let's just have something just in case. Not a lot, but a little something. There's a couple of good companies of you could do that with, too. Like, one, if you don't own a life straw, you can buy them on Amazon. They're like Correct. $19. It's basically like, if you know what a suppressor, oh, this is a female audience, right? It's so it's like so. these, uh, for, for whomever knows what a suppressor is, usually in a suppressor there are baffles, like little metal rings inside with some kind of cushion to deaden the sound, right? It's the same thing with these things. Basically, it's like baffling, but it's charcoal. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I mean... It's filter layers. Yeah, I, yeah, it's filter layers. It's like, I think, five or six of them in one yep. straw. You can literally put it in, s- in any water source, of any, literally of any and kind, it. and drink straight through that shit. They also make 
the things you can pour water into that filter out when you drink through this little straw. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've got a lot of good stuff. The other thing... We have the filter pump. They have the... The pump. Yeah, they got the pump. They have the, uh, you know, the... Um, oh, what is it? I know it's some... You put the little wand inside the water and it's like it uses UV, basically, mm-hmm. light to, you know... Yeah, just kill bacteria Kill the shit, bacteria. Yeah. I mean, shit, you just have the basic iodine, for yeah, God's sake. Yeah, iodine just as well. It just coats it and puts There's it so much system. stuff. And then, obviously, there's companies like Patriot Supply and all these other ones that sell like the big five and 15 gallon things of dry food or whatever the yeah. fuck. It's not a bad idea to have shit like that, to be honest. No. I mean, it's, I, I think you're, I think you're probably going to want to look into that soon. Yeah. It helps to have shit, anything. shit gets weird often here. And we're so dependent on our energy grid. Now look, look, it would be difficult to knock out our entire energy grid unless there was uh, I mean, even with a nuclear weapon, it would, they would have to hit nine different sites at the same time to knock out the energy grid. I wrote a paper on this for my master's, actually. Really? Yeah, you would have to... One, none of the sites use the same protocols, so you can't hack it, right? Some, two of them are offline completely. And, but if you were able to knock out... If you were to, to do some kind of coordinated attack and knock them all out, uh, power would be out for about 18 months nationwide. Uh, in the first month, 3 million people would die, mostly elderly people. Mm-hmm. So you don't want to take that chance, right? Stock up enough for you and your family. Right, and maybe twenty percent extra in case there are assholes that come by that need help because people are fucking stupid. Why not do it? It costs. There's like dooms. There's a difference though between like doomsday preppers. Oh like yeah, that's like their people whole who organize life, their like life around that. All yeah. that they do versus other people who are like, you know what? We're just gonna have a plan B, just in case for at least a little bit. You should always be prepared for whatever. I mean, you've got a, a jack in your car, right? But you don't expect your tire to blow out. And I carry a gun everywhere, but I don't expect to use it. I've carried a gun every day almost since, uh, let's see, how old am I? <laughs> for, 18, for 18 years now, every day I've had a handgun on me almost. Hey. Unless I was traveling or somewhere else. And I've never had to take it out once. Yeah. Not once. And hopefully I never do, but I'm not going to stop fucking carrying it, right? Mm-hmm. Put some water in your fucking trunk. How hard is it to put a fucking I know, case of water in your trunk? That's how my dad raised us, though. He yeah. was like, hey have items in your car mm. just in case like maybe have a blanket have some extra mm. water have you know tools to help you out uh you know if you really wanted to get into it like he was like try to get a satellite phone or something like yeah oh, dad I'll go ahead and spend money on that but either way right this if you're taught with that instinct you kind of just we prepare helps. for everything else if you're going to a fucking football game Correct. Or well, going moms camping. prepare for everything, right? Yeah. Like moms yeah, are for, always. You got for snacks kids. in your fucking purse all the time. Right? And yeah. Shit like that. Diapers, extra clothes. For my kids, food. but yeah. even listening to you guys or thinking about Y2K and all of that, like, I just didn't. I was like, it, they'll figure it out. Sometimes there's not. Like, well, I mean, shit, even with my the whole brain coronavirus is too thing. small to think about that kind now of you're, stuff. Now, are you counting on uh, Ross to make no, sure? No, no, 100%. Healthy. No, not. Okay. At all. Just making sure. Yeah. That would be scary, yes, right? Yeah. No, I'm well, counting just like on he myself, said today, but I'm he said very today, trusting. We have, a, we have cell phones for that stuff. Oh, I'm like, oh, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you go, well, you can't survive in the fucking wilderness, so we're Ross just likes not to the give same. Me shit. Ross likes to give me shit. He's like, you don't know anything about pop culture, Tiffany. I can't believe you just don't know anything about pop culture. I said, well, you don't know anything about basic survival instincts, but you don't hear me giving you shit about mm. it. And then he was like, well, uh, I, have well, my phone. I, I have my cell phone for that. I'm like, that's, you don't, you don't you have you're your, not going to have a cell phone for that. I can have a cell phone to look up pop culture, but right. for you, when you actually have to use basic survival instincts. What is the cell phone going to do for you <laughs> out in the middle of, anyways. You can Google So no, I am not. Find water I, am not I am not counting well, on the cell him. Phone may I'm be just actually, so trusting of things working out. Oh sure. yeah, well, In that's, general. That like, makes sense though, because a lot of people yeah. are like that though. So, well, it's also because you can't uh, grasp the idea of it not working out, right? So you just ignore that fact probably. Kind of, yeah. Or you haven't like, been taught I, I, anything different. Because, like, I feel like in a military world, too. You just expect everything to always go wrong. Correct. We, everything always traditionally did go wrong, or you, yeah. you were prepared for everything to go wrong. I teach it for a living. You went through the training. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? It's just something that once you grasp, or if your parents instilled in you, then you know. But if not, you don't know. Yeah, but you it's know, a little right? harder in everyday life because things change so much. I mean, now, yeah. what we, we may have uh, had a lot more access to... Uh, to hunting areas back in the day, for example, that we do now because there's more buildings and there's, you know, more people that own privately and shit now than before. So maybe that's something it, it's, but we usually rely on institutional information, like people that come to you 
you know, you guys learn lessons from students who have been in fucked up situations mm -hmm. and you guys put those out to the next students and so on and so forth. And the cycle keeps going in life. It's difficult because things change. Yeah. Right. So frequently the basic human survival stuff pretty much stays the same. Luckily, like you need water food and you need food water. and you need something Shelter. to keep you at least at around, you know, 60 degrees if you can get there yeah. for some amount of time during the day. Take care of your health. Yeah. What Take would care of your fucking feet. happen though for me to not have that stuff? Well, if the energy grid went down, the okay. supply so that lines kind of thing is what we're talking gone. about being prepared for. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you should be prepared worst for worst case anything. scenario. We're talking okay. about like worst case. Oh yeah, my mind knowing some of stuff. Okay, really that small. So Renee and also, just went through like a survival course, and that was cool. Recently. Like she learned how to like make fire from yeah. nothing. Yeah, and but that's what we're talking about. I, I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. just even simple stuff like that. It is, it's not something elaborate, but just some of those skills that you know that you have. It's a crazy when you were put in the situation where you have to depend on information that you might have learned years ago, mm. your mind will recall it instantaneously. Yeah, I think it's state-dependent me memory. You, are you familiar with that? State-dependent uh, state dependent memory? Like when you learn something or something happens to you and you're super fucked up and you can't remember what the fuck happened when you get fucked up again, you're like, oh, that's what I was thinking. It's mm -hmm. called state-dependent memory. Oh, okay, okay. It operates off the premise that uh, your neural channels are basically like uh, more, less like highways and more like railroad tracks where they can switch. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. okay. So that part of the track gets switched off. You don't remember it anymore. I think people in heightened states like that that are learning about, oh, like coming to reality with, or coming to grips with your reality that this could all go wrong and mm -hmm. all this stuff that I expect can just go away. They're like, oh, fuck. I think you learn stuff like that. I think that's why training under duress works so well. Correct. You know what I mean? Because how, how am I going to remember let's say that fucking wall just blows up right now and there's two guys coming around the corner. How do I ignore that and shoot those two guys? Mm -hmm. Unless I've been in a situation where I've had to ignore this drill sergeant yelling at me while I do this task. Correct. You know what I mean? Like, get the fuck out of here with this pussy bullshit. Train warriors or don't. I'm getting so tired of the fucking military lady I with say, I'm fucking curious. Bullshit. I always was curious because we can go on and on about that, but so many things are changing. We just talked to people who are running our career field right now and, you know, putting seer specialists through. And things have drastically changed yeah and basically the psych docs right are kind of in charge of some things because they're all around and they say listen we have a new generation of people we can't keep training the same because if we did keep training the same we essentially would have no more seer guys and we'd be extinct in a few like five years ten years down the line and so some guys are like so you're saying we're gonna make things easier for people to get through and then training is gonna take a hit and then these guys are gonna possibly put in a, a down pilot behind enemy line situation or whatever and then we're gonna have to deal with the repercussions of that now, right? That's not good. I mean, it's, we, we've, as a society, learned through uh, just weakness in general from the boomer generation, they're fucking weak. Let's be real about that. We boomers learned, would totally disagree with you on that no, one No, the too. boomers can disagree with whatever they want, but the people who lived during the 1950s, like who were adults during the 50s and 60s, 40s, 50s and 60s, those are fucking real people. Mm -hmm. The boomer generation, they're a bunch of pussies. They, they, they fucking turned away. They shirked responsibility. You saw what is like boomer. Is that born in fifties or sixties? Born in? Born in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In that time frame. So they shirked responsibility. There were more single, so like our parents. <laughs> there were more single parents during that generation than ever before. Yeah. Right. Murders went on all time high. All these other things were going on. Everybody, like everybody fucking sucks that generation's dicks still, but the greatest generation, as we refer to them before that, were clearly better human beings than they are. Even though they had all these problems with gender and race and all this stuff, they were still harder working people that didn't just expect things right and i i don't like the boomer generation that's what i'm saying so boomers they're saying it's 1946 to 1964 mm -hmm. so they are currently between the ages of 56 and 74 years old right now yeah which it makes up uh 71.6 million people in the u.s yeah fuck everyone i'm just kidding gen but, x my that, parents gen yeah. x is 65 <laughs> through 80 and then, so they're currently between, I guess, their 40s and 55. And then Gen Y. And then we're all or millennials. Or millennials is 80 through 94. Yep. So I guess it's really Elder. different. It's so funny, though, because boomers, people would always say, are the ones that were like, well, back in my day when I, I guess you know, if like, you compare them, if you compare them, right, mm -hmm. to millennials, maybe. Uh, but you're comparing boomers, it to even more Yeah, than boomers that. are definitely millennials. And I think there was a, um, they're the same. I mean, I think the Gen X people finally came to grips with the fact that there were problems in society and there were a lot of reasons for that right like the the riots obviously in la both sets uh nwa becoming popular 
and just talking about social justice, I think it changed people's minds. And they, I think a lot of people at that point, like your natural reaction to finding out somebody else is having a hard time and then seeing it live on television is like, oh, fuck, we got to help these people. I think that's a normal human being reaction. This, the generation after that is like, well, why aren't we fucking oppressed? Like, Gen Z. Why, why can't I get fucking clout on the yeah. internet for being oppressed now? And that's why all these young, skinny white children are yelling into the faces of black and brown cops, calling them racist and, mm. and, and coon and Uncle Tom yeah, and all yeah. this stuff. Like, are you fucking kidding me? You're a white child in Portland. You've never faced any adversity in your life, except for maybe it's cloudy out that day. Are you fucking kidding me? And that's how it is. I think the boomers were a lot like that, too. They were fucking mad at the establishment. It's yeah, the fucking true. summer free love yeah. bullshit in oh, Woodstock. That makes sense. Shit to and I'm all about it. I'm all about all that stuff. That's important. Descent is a really important part of fucking advancing your culture. But the lesson wasn't correct. They learned the wrong lesson. The lesson was that, uh, look, I mean, look at boomers now. They're one of the more predatory fucking groups of people of all time. Uh, all of this stuff that's happened in, in universities, including public universities, where the average uh, teacher salary has gone up commensurate to uh, inflation by about 27%, and the average administrator salary has gone up 2,000%. So these dumb, dumb assholes at the top that have C-level positions that don't do shit for the university are getting 2,000% more than they were back then, and the teachers are barely keeping pace with inflation. That's why, and now, now everybody comes out of college with all these crazy debts, and we expect them to join the workforce and do this and do that. It's nonsense. That's, the part, boomers of, that's part of being institutionalized. The fucking boomers did that. It wasn't, that wasn't millennials that everybody talks shit about. It wasn't the fucking racist the ass millennials fucking inherited that, is that what you're greatest generation. Yep. Yeah, the millennials definitely inherited that. I mean, it's not that we weren't, we weren't of age to make those policies at the time. The boomer generation, I think, is the worst in modern history, other than this new one. But that just might be because I'm old and hate TikTok. I don't know. We'll see how they turn out. We're but curmudgeon. I, th I yeah. think I th at least millennials are motivated for the most part. They're stupid I mean, a lot of the time. But they're, you know, remember that quote from, was it Churchill back in the day? Where he said, uh, a, a young conservative doesn't have a heart and an old liberal doesn't have a brain or some shit like that. Like you just get more conservative oh, as yeah, you get yeah, older. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. I, I think maybe there's a lot of that at play, but uh, I think the millennial generation is doing pretty goddamn good. Like they've come up with all this new tech Mm -hmm. social media everything that exists right now that's important came from fucking some other right. than the computer from bill gates right like everything that's in like r are really important in american society right now came from some person that's around our age that's true and think about the type of people that are making do with it is the millennial right yeah they're sitting there going like now people now everybody yeah is finding a way to be like hey i can have a business too Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you. I, I think I they. Am, I think I'm they now actually. An entrepreneur. I think they. I can now be like. It's not just anyone could be famous now, and we're going to make that happen. Like I don't know. I feel like they kind of took what they could, leveled the playing yeah. field, leveled it all out, and yeah. now we have the ability to now like everyday people can get on social mm -hmm. media and be like, I can be an entrepreneur. I don't have to have a brick and mortar shop like all right. the people did back in the day, right? Like I can literally be making millions of dollars online just through my computer, right? And you just kind of make the best with yep. what you got. But maybe. The boomer generation came up with something great that was different about their time than the previous one. I don't know, but the only thing I'm sure I, they'll tell us if they listen. <laughs> I would love to hear it because I can't think of anything that was revolutionary. I mean, look, the computer was revolutionary, but that was actually Alan Turing. It wasn't Bill Gates, right? Alan Turing uh, is a British guy that worked for their intelligence service during World War II. Everybody knows about the German Enigma codes, right? Like it, it changed. It, Everybody knows that, yeah. Well, it was the... It no, was I'm the, just saying everybody, obviously. Yeah, obviously. It was the code that the Nazis used to map. It was like encryption, right? Mm -hmm. And it was the first kind of encryption of its type where uh, it was cyclical. So it was changing every second. And you had like a one in fucking, I don't know, five million chance of breaking it. And they, would, they sat there in a room for months just trying to figure it out, right? Line by line, it didn't work because the lines change independently and all this stuff. That's Alan Turing got the idea like we need a machine that can think faster than a human being. Not necessarily can think faster, but can process these ones and zeros faster. And he built this machine and they fucking hated him. Everybody else on the team hated him because they're like, we're over here doing math and your dumb ass is over here fucking around on this fucking like and he got most of the money from the program too. Finally, that's where the computer came from, by the way, for those of you that don't know. It broke the German Enigma codes. And then it got more fucked up after that because they didn't want to let the Germans know that they had broken it, so they let a lot of the attacks happen still. So they, had, they, they, they came up with an algorithm 
Alan Turing and his team came up with an algorithm to decide which attacks to uh, allow to happen and which ones to intervene on. Right? Yeah. It's fucked up. Yeah. But that's where the computer came from. It wasn't from Bill Gates, who's out there testing vaccines on people in third world countries now. Yeah. I mean, we- it's, the, it's the goddamn to see experiments again with him. Is this guy fucking serious? Are you guys privy to any of this shit? The Tuskegee... Tuskegee experiments. Tuskegee. I know like they, that. They allowed fucking... Uh, I black think men Black service to, members to get herpes and gonorrhea. Uh, syphilis, and shit like that. mostly. Or syphilis, yeah. Um, and just basically use them as lab rats. I don't mm-hmm. think that's the only or... Th- that's the story that was fairly common back then, right? It was, but, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. basically using them as lab rats and letting them die from syphilis just so that they could see exactly what happens to you Mm -hmm. um and then they would give like or the way that they found out is like a doctor accidentally was like oh you have that let me just give you this and then someone else was like what the fuck like because they weren't supposed to actually treat black people for it anyways bill gates has been doing something at least his foundation who knows how involved these people really ever are but they've been, you, you've heard of this, you've read this. Yeah, but especially with such big corporate, like exactly yeah. how involved is he? I, I, I wouldn't expect that much, although I've listened to them talk about education and stuff like that, and it's, it comes, I think it comes originally from a good place, but it's very uh, non-inclusive, for lack of a better phrase. Like it, this, this whole charter school push he and Melinda have been on for mm-hmm. the last fucking 25 years. Not that charter schools aren't a good idea. The problem is, is you, you make sur- some charter schools, right? Separate but equal is never equal, ever. That's what we learned in Plessy versus Ferguson. That's what we learned throughout the civil rights movement. If you start selecting certain kids based on whatever metric it, it is, it doesn't matter if it's race or gender or their scores on something or any of that bullshit, everybody else gets disenfranchised because the attention and money go here and everybody else goes to the shitty school. Moreover, if there's any problem at all getting your child to the shitty school, if you're a single mother, for example, in an inner city and you don't have the time each morning to take that fucker all the way over there and you have to rely on something else and you don't have childcare after work either for that person, then it doesn't work. That person gets excluded because they can't meet the requirements. That's fucked up. That's yeah. not how education is supposed to work. Every child in this country should get educated mm-hmm. as, as best as we can. And the fact that we would ever say that we can't afford to do something in education is fucked up. Yeah. Like that is, that's absolute nonsense. That's like saying, well, I can't afford the right foundation for my house. So I'm just going to build it on this fucking quicksand. Get fucked. Nobody <laughs> would do that. And we yeah, have, sure. we're, we're turning our kids into ignorant pussies. And you can see the fucking results every single day on television in Portland and Seattle, California and fucking New York every single day. Get fucked. I think it's because the main people that are doing anything, California and New York, they're not fucking having kids anymore. You can't fucking have kids there. Try taking your kids, try taking your baby to a restaurant in California. Oh, yeah. See how many fucking horrible looks you get. We don't have fucking, we don't have uh, high chairs. Sorry. Because we don't, no, they don't want you to, they don't like kids. They're all fucking starting their online businesses. And I'm surprised. No, what can, can you not sue for that? No, it's just, you know, they don't really do you that, I mean? but I'm they make it. I'm surprised no one has because it's California. Like, you know, you don't have a high chair or a Yeah, but I don't place. think being a child is a, is a disability. So the ADA. Right. Right. I didn't say I mean, disability, like, but I'm I know, saying but like, like, what inclusive, would, like inclusive. They do little things like no strollers allowed, right? Or we don't have a place to put your stroller. Mm-hmm. Or they say like, we don't have mm-hmm. this. That's them saying, we don't want you to have kids. None of us are having kids. We just want to fucking party and have a good, I don't know. That's Dang. the way that I Babies feel. aren't a protected class right. either. So the only way to sue for discrimination is if you're a protected class. Yeah. But not, not that you specifically are, but the thing that you're being discriminated well, against is like gender mom, or religion or something like that. Right. Mothers. I don't think single mother or mother in general or parent is a protected class of citizen. Although it depends. So that'd be the only way that you can officially sue someone. Well, no, there's, there's, there's in the workplace you can. Like, it, let's say I was... Uh, the CEO of a company and I'm interviewing you to hire you, right? If I ask you your age, for example, or if mm-hmm. I ask you if you have children, then you can sue me for that. That is discrimination to even ask those questions during the, the, the HR event. Oh, okay. Yep. So there's some cases where that's true, but I don't think a restaurant would be one. I didn't know. Because usually, usually but if it's a privately owned place, they can serve whomever the fuck they want. Yeah. They don't have to give you an excuse. They can, res- they can just tell you to get the fuck out. And if you say no, then you're serving. trespassing, right? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, but it's like that. I right? feel like that's what everyone, I don't know, 
like my mind is just in California. If anyone doesn't like anything, it's like, I'm going to sue you. That's yeah. what I think. <laughs> oh, yeah? I'm going to fucking oh, sue yeah? you. I'll sue you. That's how people would be. No, I just hang my head in shame and go to freaking Denny's down the street because <laughs> hey, I'm not Waffle allowed House. Waffle House is awesome. to take our, um, you know? my kid anywhere. But uh, gosh, we could talk about we could computers talk about and syphilis all day, but <laughs> we should. We have advice. We have an advice segment at the end. We oh, do. boy. Uh, broettes or man fans, write in. Ask us advice. We don't know why. Um, I, don't, I don't think they knew you were going to be on the show. No. Hmm. But it's going to be great. It is. Looking we have to what? It. Let's do one. Okay, so this is from a man fam. Um, he said, my name is Brian, and I have a crush on someone that I work with. So at the time, she is preoccupied and stressed with finishing up nursing school. I was wondering if you guys have any tips or suggestions on what I can do to try and see if she's interested in me. I already have her phone number, and we're going to go out after she is finished with school, and she has taken her nursing board test. He goes, I just don't want to push her away or fuck up any chances that I might have with her. Um, you know, thanks again. Thanks for your guys' help that you're able to give me. But also, he says, I am also wondering if women have any common turn on. So, like, I know women are all different and have things that like to turn them on. Um, so, I was just curious if you guys can help me with that as well. Well, I can't really help you with the woman's turn on thing because I'm not a woman, but sure. I could tell you what no one on earth respects, and that's uh, timidity, being timid. Mm. Uh, particularly not a woman like look there there are aberrations from gender to gender there are some effeminate males and there are some you know very uh, alpha not not even alpha but just some masculine females but typically speaking our gender roles over the last 180 or so thousand years have been the man hunts and defends and the wife fucking takes care of kids in the house right not necessarily that that has to be the case all the time people go out and do a lot of different things you guys are both professional women you're in the fucking military but still Women often offer more compassion and empathy than dudes do, more mm -hmm. understanding. Uh, more, they inject more emotion into the relationship where the guy's just trying to get shit done. There's, there's good and bad on both sides. Women are genetically programmed to respond to a man that is a fucking alpha. The end. Be one. I mean, it's like this idea that you're going to fucking get her off track is wrong. You're thinking about it wrong. If, that's even po if it's possible for you to get her off track with your mere presence, then you guys shouldn't be together. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it is you don't think that he's just being kind and understanding. I think he's trying of, to be kind and understanding. And of her being like, okay, well, I don't want to like bother her right now because I know she's super preoccupied with nursing school. You're saying just, dude, fuck it. Go, go for it. And if You know says, what preoccupied no, no. with school people need is a fucking break now and then. Yeah. Somebody, yeah. That, this is why women, by the way, don't want to fucking, when you're in a car with your girlfriend at the end of the day or your wife and she's like, you're like, hey, where do you want to go eat? And she's like, I don't care. She generally doesn't care. Here's what she cares about. She just spent the last however many hours dealing with her work. Now, most women are working as well, but also dealing with the house and the children. She's been making decisions all day, unilaterally, without any input from anybody. And she just wants to fucking relax and eat some fucking food. So you choose. Take me to some place yeah. that's awesome. Yep. Know me I've well been, enough. Chris and I will have this argument sometimes too because he always wants me to choose. I'm like, dude, I'm telling you right now, I don't care. I, really I don't, don't want to make a fucking choice right now. I've, I will say I, that reason. I say that and then if he takes me somewhere. No, I, because while well, anything though, <laughs> it's like seriously. The, the point of that is, by the way, that uh, if, if you're not, you, you, you need to be actively involved in pursuing somebody that you're interested in or completely cut it off. You can't do both. It'll drive you crazy, and it'll create resentment that'll come up later in a relationship. If it does happen, fuck all that. Sometimes things just don't work out, and you got to move on for a while. Maybe it'll start again later. You never know. Yeah, or it's things not like the that right happen all the time. time. Yeah, like you know, what I think so too. Is like I think that school and nursing school is a great thing to say that you're preoccupied with when you're not interested in someone as well. Is that what she told no, him? No, but I'm just saying, like, he said that he has a crush on someone he mm -hmm. works with, and he knows that she's, I guess, she's preoccupied and stressed with finishing up nursing school. So I'm guessing that if he knows that, maybe she told him. I don't know, right? It's just something I'm assuming. Yeah, I mean, if she said that to you, that, oh, yeah, then, then she's then that not means, interested. Yeah, right. exactly. So if, if a woman is telling you, oh, my God, you know, I would, yeah, I would totally love to hang out, but I'm really stressed and preoccupied with work and, and school, mm -hmm. she's, listen, if someone wants to make time for you mm -hmm. and someone, well, some, someone likes you, they'll make time for you. No Correct. Well, I mean, look, if they sometimes people's priorities get mixed up, right? And and the stress of everything that's going on can make them make bad decisions and say things they don't really mean. But again, I, I the only choice is just kind of to walk away from that. And if 
mm-hmm. she uh, follows you, like it reaches back out to you, then she's interested. If she doesn't reach out to you, then just move on. So when he says, I'm wondering if you have any tips or suggestions on what I can do to try and see if she's interested in me, you are just saying, just ask. You could just ask, yeah, like, hey, I don't want to make this weird or anything, but if you don't want to, like, hang out and stuff later or after this even, you don't have to, like, tell me that you're in school. We can just not hang out and be mm-hmm. friends. It's not a big deal. And, you know, if she responds any kind of way to that, then, you know, that's not positive, just fucking cut it off. Yeah. And we'll see what happens later. Right. I don't really have any, like, ticks, tricks or you know, tips up my sleeve that's like, oh, like do all these things to try to catch your attention and make her think that you like her. Like, like they stupid shit like they show in the movies, right? Yeah. Part of me would just go up to her and be like, hey, I was curious what you're doing Friday night because I'd love to take you to dinner. Well, look at the... Yeah, uh, let's look, get a drink or, or something. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, let's yeah. We have a drink after work. But then like that right there, if you're kind of asking her on a date, shows that you're interested in her. Like that's point Correct, blank. Yeah. Yes. I'm interested in you mm. without playing yes. the games, without trying to flirt or... Right? And I also like think what? him making, saying that she's very preoccupied and what should I do? You think that's may be a little bit of an excuse on his part to not actually shoot a shot, right? Could be, yeah. I mean, look. He has his, her number I, already, so. I appreciate, I appreciate the fact that he's trying to be thoughtful. I like that. Yes. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good trait to have. But you can be thoughtful after she already knows that you like her and if. Yeah. You can well, also. But if you're talking about stuff that's a bit like, what, what's, a, what's a kind of a turn on for like an av- or, or a common or whatever the fuck, any kind of commonality. Commonality is going to be biology, typically speaking, if you're into science. So it's going to be the woman wants to get grabbed by the fucking face and told what to do <laughs> for the first time all day. She doesn't want to make any decisions anymore. She wants a fucking man that she feels safe with that will fucking just tell her what to do. And not because she wants to be told what to do. She just doesn't want to make a fucking decision right then. It's not about subjugating herself to you. It's about trust and she's trusting you enough to take care of her for a couple of hours while she shuts her brain out. That's all it is, right? It's just basic Very fucking true. biology So and psychology. Just, just do that. You don't have to be a dick to be an alpha. As so, a matter of fact, if you're announcing you're an alpha all the time, you're fucking not. Correct. That's very true. So when he says here, an alpha. <laughs> we are, when we are going out, at, he said we're going out after she's finished with school mm. um, and her board. So even though apparently they have that plan, are you saying just like shoot your shot now? Uh, yeah, I would. Why would you... Why would you sit stagnant for, I don't even know how, what is yeah, it? I don't even how? know. He didn't even, he didn't that give sounds a time. Like a yeah. long time. Like there's no, there's no Because life is going to come up. That's the thing. Yeah, if, you're, if you're allowing like school or work or being busy to get in the way of even the beginning of your relationship, like shit is going to come up. Oh, sure. If you can't even handle talking to someone else yeah. during that, you never know. But anyway, I, I don't take those kind of excuses. Anytime someone says like, I'm just like so busy right now. It's like. Mm. Okay, well, I've fucked up a lot of opportunities for guys. Yeah, I mean, it's not a bad idea. Because I wanted to. It's, it's, yeah. not, it's not a bad idea to, to, if she's... To focus on yourself, that's well, fine. That, but. that too, yeah, for sure. And you, it, it's, and, but, but then I, tell him that, right? Yeah, if, if she's being if honest she, like, with him, you know, that's one thing. But it doesn't seem, that, that seems like a weird... Look. I, I can't imagine a scenario where I ask someone just to wait for a couple of months while I finish some that's, that's a young girl thing. That is, so if I was... Maybe when I'm done with school. I, if I was trying to be try. nice to a guy, um, and I was really busy, but I also could really make time for him, but I didn't want to because I felt really bad turning him down because maybe we do work together. Or I do think he's a nice guy, but he's just not my type. I would totally be the type, back in the day, young Tiffany would be like, hey, you know, uh, maybe after this, right? And like give him... Yeah, yeah. Sadly give him hope, but in... You know, because and then something else comes up later on because I yeah. felt bad turning him down and saying no, straight up no, because yeah. I didn't want to confront him with the truth. That's that's most people. Most people don't want to just tell the truth. Yeah. That's why it's so offensive to hear the truth. Sometimes people just hear. Well, because some people do get so offensive. Yeah. Though, and it almost makes it hard sometimes. That's why people. That's why the ghosting thing is so big for people nowadays. Because when people sat up would sit there and straight up say, "Listen." You know, I, I really appreciate the time we spent together, but you're just not really my type and I don't really see us going anywhere, but I wish you the best. Mm-hmm. The other person's like, well, fuck you. And they start harassing or stalking or they just completely obliterate them. And the other person goes, you know what would be easier to just stop talking to you and do not you think, have to deal with this anymore. Do you anymore. think that's why? I think happened? that's why some people do. I think it's, I think it's because it was easy to just disappear. I think that too. Yeah. But I think both, right? I'm sure it's both, yeah. But it, to this guy, if, you, if you're... Like, there's nothing wrong with a nice romantic gesture. No. 
but you have to pay attention to how it's received. You also got under, you have to understand if she is truly in a very stressful situation, she may not respond the way you want her to. You can't get offended if people don't respond the way you want them to. That's irrational behavior. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. Like, how, how, why would someone respond exactly the way you want them to, mm-hmm. right? The, the point of that whole situation is I know how I want somebody to respond. That's the feedback, right? So what do I have to do to make that happen? Because I care about this person. Objective and like stop thinking about yeah. yourself and what, like it's that whole love language shit, which I think is kind of kooky, but some of it makes sense. Some of it, yeah. You have to communicate to people in the way that they understand and the way that they receive it positively. Maybe they right. had a bad relationship. Maybe their fucking dad was a piece of shit and gave them gifts all the time because he didn't want to be there. And now they don't care about gifts. But you're buying them shit all the time trying to demonstrate how you feel about them. Because that's fucking to you, retarded. That's important. Yeah. Yeah. And, you it like is, that. and it is important to you. And that's something you got to animate to your partner. But if if that's the way you're showing love to somebody who can't receive love that way, they're gonna feel unloved. Correct. That's not that's not smart. You have to do that's it. That's like in trying the way to use they... a Phillips head screwdriver and a flathead fucking yes. not gonna work. What's man. your love language, Dan? Uh yeah. <laughs> white claw mostly. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. So gifts, receiving really? gifts. It's not physical it, touch. Is no, it receiving it's mine's gifts? time for sure. Time. Quality time? Yeah. Yep. Really? Mm-hmm. So what is what because is I'm, quality, an int- I'm an introvert. I'm a true introvert, right? So Which, what is quality time to you though? Because it's different to everyone. Uh, I could just sit in a room alone with this woman for the entire day and never say a goddamn word. Yeah, okay, yeah. so that's why I'm asking. Or so we it's could not, do. We could go out shopping. We could be together all day. I just want to be in their physical so presence. Intimate physical yes. presence. Them paying attention to you, physical presence, or mm, them just being really their matter. physical presence. It doesn't matter. Sometimes she's like walking around doing shit around the house and stuff, and I'm like. Just the fact that she's in the room makes me feel better as a human being. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know what that is. See, I think, I feel like guys are more so like that a little bit more. Whereas girls, when it comes to quality time, girls are like, I legit want you, us to be talking and connecting. Yeah. Quality time and you listening and not just, just being there. Whereas guys, yeah, maybe. Chris, just like sometimes for me, just to be in the same room as him, just like mm-hmm. you, or to sit there and watch a television show. Right. That's it. Right. Yeah, it's, right. you know, everybody's a little different, but that's the point, right? If you really care about somebody, find out what's unique and different about them and then address that. Stop thinking about what's in your head. Yeah. Like, if you really want to actually connect with somebody and make that last, try to connect with them in their head and not bring them over to your head because it's never going to work that way. You can't do it. Exactly. And if they're the right person, they'll fucking reach back out to you, you know, in their head and, and, and it'll, it'll work. If they're not, then it won't work and you can fucking move on with your life, right? There's a... A book called Principles by an investment guy named Ray Dalio. Very good book. And it's the principles about business and life, basically. And one of them is hire slow, fire fast. And that means take a little bit of time getting to know someone before you let them into your life or business. And then as soon as you realize it's not going to work, get the fuck out. Yep. No, don't waste any time because time is the only resource you cannot fucking make more of. I can make more money. I can buy more land. I can replace my fucking phone. I can't replace time ever. doesn't work that way. So don't waste your fucking time. I like that. Sounds so don't right. waste. Oh, sorry. So man, fan, don't waste your time. Ask her out now. Yes. See if she's interested. Shoot your shot. And listen, if she's not, re- be receptive of it. And hear also what be she's very saying, which is what we always say on the show too. Mm-hmm. Listen to what they actually mm-hmm. say. Listen to their actions. Which is even if even if it starts with I'm super busy right now, it ends with and I can't hang out. Hear the end. I'm not going to hang out with you part, <laughs> and not hang on to that little kernel of. I'm just really busy, and when I'm not busy, just hear what they actually say. And also be honest with people. If you don't want to hang out with them, just tell them. Yeah. Right. If she but was writing in, I would say. If she was writing in, we would say that too, but be we honest. don't know. But once again, we can't control what she's going to do. We can only mm. tell him what to do. Yeah. And he Word. better fucking do it. Mm. Or else Probably we'll won't. never fuck. <laughs> Probably won't. Probably won't. People rarely take advice. They ask for Actually, we have a lot of people who do take our advice. Take, take our advice. They, give us they update updates us. on how it actually worked because we're super smart and awesome. And we know a lot of things. Uh, I we, didn't know this was a comedy show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, well. I'm even laughing when you're saying this. About uh, us being smart and awesome? No, you know what I think it, I think it is so too is I think we're just so honest with things. We're honest and we're not, um, but we're not bullshitting mm. them. We're not being like, oh, girl, it's totally okay. We're like, that's not fucking cool. And we've been with, we've been And we through, fuck up a lot. <laughs> I almost said we've been we with a lot of We can speak from a lot of, uh, <laughs> all of our own mistakes. Yeah, that's what's, all it what's comes What's that from. Uh, old phrase, uh, a smart man learns from his own mistakes and a wise man learns from the mistakes of others. Right? Yes. Yep. That's a good one. So we're smart, not Don't wise. be fucking stupid. But it's some, there's, there's also uh, lessons not learned in blood are soon forgotten i think that might have been lincoln that said that i don't remember 
But that's right? also like true. If, if you don't learn a lesson through your own blood, sweat, and tears, basically is what but you're many, saying. That's oh, very yeah, true, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. So many yeah. people can tell you all day long mm. to do something, but traditionally you learn the hardest way and the best way yeah. through I think most people ask for advice because they're hoping for the off chance that somebody's going to validate how they already feel. And we traditionally don't. So We don't. Yeah. And they know that. And maybe so that's why. Like, I don't know. A lot of times people will be like, all right, we need the cold I need you truth. to fucking punch me in the face right now because something's going on that but even, I know is not But even right. a punch in the face with any, like with any criticism or uh, advice, it's only effective if the person's a willing recipient of it, right? Correct. Like you right. can't help an addict that isn't ready to fucking stop. No. You you have, everybody's swan. got personal choice. So... I don't know. It's interesting giving advice to people, though. It is. You know and I mean? like, I don't know. We, we do it just, it's more, the way that we do it is more like you're in a room with a bunch of people, mm. especially if it's girls writing right. in. You're in a room with girls. You say kind of like, hey, my boyfriend's doing this. And the reaction of the girls in the room, whether they are like trained professionals or whatever, that reaction is going to tell you whatever you need to know, right? Right. There's so many times that we bounce ideas and these things off of our girlfriends and friends anyway that is very similar well that's kind of the point i mean uh like if i wanted actual help and advice i would go to, to a fucking therapist, therapist right yeah. but if well, i would just want an initial like, no but I, how I do think, you feel about this right? yeah here you guys have been to therapists before i imagine right yes, yes. <laughs> many um, times so the point of it and like, everyone should look par- therapists are trained in dealing with that stuff they know a lot of the psychological terms and they understand how the human mind works in some cases and that's great but it's basically like conscious guided meditation. They're, they're having a conversation with you so you can okay. realize for yourself Correct. how fucking stupid you are. 100%. Right? So I think the conversational nature of giving advice this way is much, more, is much better than like Quora. Like ask a question, get a fucking paragraph yeah. answer. Yeah. The conversation is what's important. What did Eisenhower say? Uh, planning is everything. A plan is nothing but planning is everything. And the point of that is your plan is going to get fucked up. Right. Plans never go the way it's supposed to. But the idea of planning means you've game planned for every scenario, hopefully. And now you can react quickly. Right. So the idea that they're thinking through these things in their mind, because we often do things as human beings without thinking about it. And then we look back, we're like, oh, that was stupid. We should have done it this way. That would have made a lot more sense. But if you don't think about that in advance, like do red cell planning and shit like that, then you're always going to be fucked up. So Mm -hmm. I think the way you guys do it is better than a QA. and a Right. It's better to have a group of people from different viewpoints discussing a very specific topic to see from your experience what you might do because your experience may have trained you better to deal with that situation than theirs has. Right. Right. I think think it's smart. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. I don't do it as much, but I used to talk to myself in the car all the time. Mm. And I would put the phone. I do that every day. I would put the phone up to my. Well, now everybody just thinks you're on the Bluetooth. Right, so it's it's a lot better now because people are like, oh, she's the phone's just right there. Yeah, I still feel uncomfortable when someone drives. I have conversations with myself every single day. I say I do all the time too. Every day, but those those are important conversations that you have though. Is not really there. How you speak to yourself and your thoughts and determines a lot. I used to do it with uh, headphones in, like my my Raycons or whatever the fuck. But I don't really wear them anymore. I'm just using my car, so I have to remember as I'm opening the car door that. Now these people won't believe that I'm talking on the phone. They'll know I'm talking to myself. Correct. So you got to adjust. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe I should just get a fake set and just leave them in all the time. You should. Talk to myself well. like, sorry, I'm on the. I'm and you're like trolling oh, yeah. everyone. Like, you motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> That's literally trolling everyone. That's though. how I look in the car when I'm like this. But anyway, Dan Holloway, I thank know. you so much for being on the show. Fan favorite. Really requested. I don't believe that. No. I mean, you actually been from the beginning. A lot of ladies. I think they're probably really. A lot of ladies were. I think they're really sad that now you have a girlfriend. But there was a lot of ladies. We're not. We love her. You're awesome. Actually, I do love your girlfriend. Mm-hmm. She's awesome. She sure is. Dunkaroos. She is. She's a big uh, I mean, snacks a, fan. She's, a, she's actually the person that got me into Dots pretzels as well. Oh, which is I, I like her for best. M- so many things. Besides the fact she's super hot. Really yeah, cool. she's super hot. Funny, too. super down to earth, really chill. I like mm-hmm. her son a lot. He was fucking crazy. Oh, he told uh, her boy, today dude. that he wants to push you in a pool. <laughs> right, but he does. I was playing with the kids the whole time. That's my boy. That he was my I. sous chef, dude. Yeah. He was Oh, awesome. he did refer to your ribs as mine and Jesse's ribs. Oh, yeah, I told yeah, him. You I was them. like, if I yeah. win, it's going to be you and me. Yeah. But I lost for me and the child. Yeah. And that's very sad. But we're so happy you came on. I know. And um, I don't know. Georgia was like smoking weed in here, so I feel very weird. Until next, <laughs> and now someone's walking well, around. But anyway, until love you next time. Bye. Bye.